Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another Identity 5 YouTube video. Uh, recently, a lot of you guys have been like, oh my god, Eli, we need a Hunter tier list video. Oh my god. And I'm like, all right, we'll do a Hunter tier list video. So we're doing a Hunter tier list video. Um, if you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. I really appreciate it. It helps out the channel. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first Hunter on the Hunter tier list in C tier, the worst tier because he is bad, um, is Lizard Man. Yeah, evil reptilian, giant jumping lizard that uh, kills people with a piece of glass. Whoever came up with that idea is was was not me because I'm not crazy, but no, just playing. Um, yeah, so uh, sorry for those of you main reptilian, but he is the worst Hunter in the game, unfortunately, in C tier. Uh, the biggest issue with Reptilian is his early game chase is very, very suboptimal. Uh, as we all know, <coughs> as we all know, uh, it is very hard to catch a survivor with Reptilian in the early game. That is why they do run Blink, so they can get one hit there, um, which is really nice. But um, after that, good luck, um, because you can jump to get you know get around the map. Sometimes you can um, juke the survivor into you know getting a free hit in on that way, but. Overall, it is really hard to actually land a hit with Reptilian. Um, so that is the biggest issue with Reptilian. His early game chase is not very good. Now his camp is decent. Um, you can double hit the Rescuer uh, if you land that lethal crash. Um, but, you know, a good survivor can dodge in. It's hard to hit them on good survivors. Um, so sometimes that can be an issue. Um, but his camp in general is good. His late game is good in that he has good map control. He gets around on small maps in particular. He can get around any part of the map fairly easily using that triple jump. So that's really good. Um, and a good reptilian, uh, like I said, is good at camping, can, can stuff the rescue. So that's something to keep in mind. However, um, overall, reptilian's early game chase is just very bad. That makes him a C tier hunter and the lowest tiered hunter in the game now currently with this new update coming up this is the only hunter in c tier reptilian is the only hunter in c tier there's quite a few in b tier um uh, before hell ember was actually worse okay so that we're going to talk about hell ember now before uh hell ember um giant dude with a mask who used to be a normal dude and now he is some crazy dude who kills people with puppets and inferno walking fire phantom thingies with with pickaxes or or sickles i don't freaking know what they're called dude i don't, I don't know i'm crazy anyway um Hell Umber is now a B tier hunter because of this update. He's getting buffed significantly, um, where he starts out with a phantom right out the gate, um, and he also uh, the they had the bots like the phantom control bots. They're a little bit more player like now, so they don't stop before they hit. They just hit immediately. So that's pretty good. That could that could benefit him um, and make him a better hunter. However, the biggest issue with Hell Umber is his early game chase as well. This is kind of a constant theme. A lot of these lower tiered. Hunters, um, the issues with them is their early game chase is very bad, and that, that is what makes them low tier hunters. Helmer has a very hard time catching survivors. His hitbox is significantly small. Um, he needs Blink to get one of those hits, but um, the good thing about him, the difference between him and Reptilian, is he starts out with a Phantom, and you can trap survivors for one hit with the Phantom, and then use Blink to get the second hit. Now, Reptilian doesn't have that option. They have to manually hit someone without any real abilities um, with Hell Ember. You technically have the Phantom to help you out, so that is useful. So because of that, Hell Ember is does fall in B tier. He's the lowest B tier hunter, and he's kind of on the verge of B and C. But with this new update letting him start out with the Phantom and the Phantoms being a little bit more player-like, um, this makes him a B tier hunter. Now, again, his early game chase is very bad. However, um, it's a little bit better than Reptilian, and that would make him what makes him higher than Reptilian. Uh, his camp is actually significantly good. Uh, the reason for that is if you time it properly, you can hit a survivor um, with your first hit and then use a phantom to follow up with a second hit and you can stuff rescues with Hell Ember, believe it or not. Um, yeah, so uh, so Leo the Hell Ember, uh, good camper, good late game control of the map. You can throw your puppets pretty far. Um, you can get no attack recovery if you switch places with them while they're in mid air. Um, so yeah, Hell Ember is a is a good hunter um he is a good he is mediocre okay he's not he's not necessarily good but he's mediocre um but again late game he is good he has good map control he has good camp the early game is the biggest issue with him but because of this uh you know this buff coming to him i do believe he falls in l at low b tier um yeah next hunter on b tier is axe boy now axe boy um when he first came out was around b tier then he kind of fell down to c tier and now he's kind of all these changes that are adding to him i believe there are more nerfs than or there are more buffs than nerfs so i believe this moves him up to b tier he's better than hell Ember, 
and Reptilian quite significantly because those two hunters struggle quite a bit. Um, but Axe Boy's biggest issue with him also is his chase. He does have the fireballs with the the, uh, with the restful pine, restful tree, you know what, dude, whatever they're called, I don't even know. Um, but yeah, a uh, little little Axe Boy uh, with the you know crooked head is a little creepy, but you know whatever. Okay, anyway, he runs around with an axe and he kills people and he throws fireballs at them. Wow, that makes a lot of sense because he uses trees to use fireballs to do something, I don't know. Anyway, um, Axe Boy, yeah, so Axe Boy's B tier, his chase is decent if you can land the fireballs, however, survivors can dodge them. Um, his camp is okay, again, you can double hit the rescue, but it's still not great, it's hard to land fireballs sometimes. Um, his late game, um, you can expel the souls, you can expel the fireballs, uh, which makes it, it's really hard to dodge those. I mean, one, a good Axe Boy will almost always hit you. If they have the Dispel Souls and Expel Souls, where they can draw in the Fireball and shoot it out so they have two chances of hitting you, you're probably not going to dodge it against a good Axe Boy. Also, Axe Boy is a very fast hunter once he gets Presence up. Again, the early game chase is a problem, but once his Presence is built up to 1,000, um, he gets the uh, Pathway of Tree Branches, whatever the hell it's called, I don't know, dude. Uh, but uh, good luck, good luck figuring that out. It's like... Restful Road, is that it? Restful Road, something like that. Um, I don't really play X-Play that much. I don't think he's a very good hunter, but um, he is, he's decent, he's decent. Um, but uh, once his presence is built up, he has a lot of speed, he has a lot of map coverage, that makes him very good. Um, so overall, x is a B-tier hunter. Again, early game chase, a little bit of a struggle. Camp is oh, camp is pretty good, late game pretty good. Um, but getting to that point for x is the biggest struggle with him. So that is what makes him a B-tier hunter. Okay, the next hunter on B tier is Geisha. And now, guys, I know you're probably like, oh my god, I love Geisha, dude. Why are you putting Geisha so low? But unfortunately, Geisha just struggles in the top tiers and that a lot of survivors know how to counter her. Okay, so basically, the biggest issue with Geisha is she literally has a counter built into her ability. Okay, so think about, process that for a second. Okay, process that. That is not very good. Okay. Any survivor can counter Geisha, well, not counter, but can kite her and counter her ability in a manner of speaking, okay? So that's kind of a problem, right? When you can literally press a button, it's like, oh, well, your ability's countered after pressing one button, so, like, what are you gonna do about that now, right? So that's kind of the biggest issue with Geisha, um, is that you can counter her by pressing a button. Um, now, again, it is kind of difficult when you have to constantly look back and forth, and it's hard to kite that way, so that is what benefits Geisha in that uh, it's harder for the survivor to kite because they're not really looking behind themselves where they're running sometimes because they look back and forth and blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the biggest issue um, with Geisha um, is that a, any survivor, in essence, can counter her. Um, now, the hardest counter to Geisha being probably Thief uh, is not a pl very <laughs> commonly played survivor. So that does benefit Geisha. Um, however, Seer is a pretty good counter to Geisha as well because you're literally looking at the hunter and building up your owl while you're kiting her for about most of the time that you're kiting her. So that's kind of unfortunate. Um, Geisha's chase is good in the lower tiers because survivors don't know how to counter her, but once you get to higher tiers, they know how to kite her properly, and then it becomes difficult. Um, additionally, Geisha's camp is not... It's it's pretty average. However, you can double-hit rescuers if you use that ability to go flying through the air and drop down on them and get the no-attack recovery hit, and you can get a second hit on them. Um, and you can stuff rescues that way. You can also double-hit mercenaries pretty easily with Geisha. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, Geisha's chase is pretty good um, in low in low tiers. It's very good. It's actually broken in lower tiers, and she's actually an S tier hunter in lower tiers. Once you get to higher tiers, she's down to a B tier hunter. So um, that is what makes Geisha B tier. Is she is easily countered by survivors who know how to kite her. Um, but other than that, she is still a decent hunter, and you do see her played a little bit in top tiers. So uh, Geisha is a B tier hunter. The next hunter in B tier is Gamekeeper. Okay, now Gamekeeper. A uh, big moose dude with a chain around his neck and the, the horns and the white eyeballs and he has a hook. I don't know why that makes sense. Why a hook goes with a giant deer who walks around and I don't know. Anyway, but Gamekeeper is B tier and the reason for that is uh, he used to be C tier. He used to be a really bad hunter. He actually used to be one of the worst in the game. But now his hitbox with his chain hook is absolutely broken. Um, this happened. This was an update going into season 10-ish, something like that. I don't know. Um, but this was in season 10. This was implemented, um, I believe, and now Gamekeeper is B tier uh, because you can actually hit survivors with your chain hook. Back when he was in C tier, you couldn't. Uh, you just really could not because the hook's hitbox was not even was not even there. It was just like you had to hit him directly. Now you can throw a hook at a at a survivor and it literally turns 45 degrees to the left and still hits the survivor, which doesn't make any sense based off of laws of physics. 
But, um, you know, it's it's Gamekeeper, right? I mean, like, he can do whatever he wants. He's like a scientist who defies physics. Like, what, what is going on, dude? Anyway, so that's Gamekeeper. Um, he literally has one ability, and that is Chain Hook. Um, you can, you know, a good thing about him is now you can hook walls, and when you hook walls and you do the stomp when you land, uh, it slows the survivor down, which makes him pretty easy to catch after that. Um, so it's not easy to kite Gamekeeper. It really isn't. His early game chase is good. His camp is good. Um, in that you can Terror Shock the Survivor with your Chain Hook, um, and you can stuff Mercenaries. I mean, you Terror Shock, and it does, you know, once you have the Presence built up to 1,000 after you get that first down, um, it deals, with the Terror Shock, it'll deal normal damage of a hit, and you follow up with a second hit, you stuff the Rescue. Right? So that's pretty good. Um, the biggest issue with Gamekeeper is he has no Cypher control whatsoever. I mean, the best thing you see with him is Gamekeeper plays Peepers, and they drop a Peeper here and there on a Cypher, and it's pretty good. But other than that, his Cypher control is very bad. Um, so his chase is good, his camp is good, but his cipher control is not. And that's what makes him a B-tier hunter. Um, if he had better cipher control, he'd be better. Uh, but overall, he's a solid, well-rounded hunter. He's pretty balanced. Um, and you do see some gamekeepers, even in top tiers. You see a lot in low tier. He's a very good low tier hunter because survivors don't know how to dodge chain hooks. Um, and he's pretty good uh, in upper tiers as well. And you see him played quite a bit more often than you used to. That's for sure. Okay, the next hunter in B tier, and I'm, I'm, you know, it's really unfortunate to say this, but it is Photographer. Now, the biggest issue with Photo right now is Photographer struggles against survivors who know how to kite him. Um, not kite him, counter him. Oh my god, I'm, I'm all over the place. So, Photographer, the most handsome guy in the game, as a lot of people would say. No, I'm not. Whatever, dude. I don't know. Maybe Izzy? I don't know. He's a pretty cool dude. You know, taking pictures, doesn't get paid a lot because photographers don't make a lot, but um, they should. They should get paid more, because he does a very good job of taking pictures. Anyway, um, however, there are some cameras that take pictures of walls on certain maps, but we're not going to get into that. Um, the biggest issue with Photographer is that survivors know how to counter him, and they know how to beat him. Um, the hardest counter, believe it or not, to Photographer is voice communication, uh, BC. Um, the reason for that is you can have one survivor decode in the photo world, the three decode in the real world, and they will just follow the photographer around the one in photo world and tell them each of the survivors where he is at all times. So there's no way they can he can actually find someone in the photo world. They can tell them when he's taking a picture. They can tell him where he's going so they don't get terror shocked. Um, it's just really easy to beat a photo with voice communication. Um, now, good photos can seek out people on memorize spawn points to a point where they can find literally everybody, which is pretty amazing. But the biggest issue, again, with photo is that um, survivors know how to be, they know how to heal in photo world and heal in real world to manipulate that damage to a point where he can no longer one-shot survivors. Um, they know how to hide from the photographer when they're shared in the photo world because they have one person in photo world telling them where they the photographer is at all times so they can get on the opposite end of the map. Um, and a photographer has a really hard time, gets rotated very hard, has a very hard time actually finding survivors um, when you have voice communication. However, a good photographer in lower tiers when you don't have VC, photographer is very good because, um, you know, when you're in like, you know, Bug, Snake, or Cobra, and, and, you know, even Elk for that matter, and you don't have VC, um, photographer will dominate, absolutely get four kills over and over if you know what you're doing as a photographer. Um, but once you get to something like Mammoth and all four players are on VC, it is very hard to win as photographer. Also, once you get to legendary rank mode, that is being Griffin. Um, and uh, Champion, it is actually a little bit easier on Photographer as only two people are on voice comms at that particular time. So that makes it easier on Photographer to win um, because you can only have, you have to have t sometimes two people in Photo World telling people where they are. You can use the ping to like say, oh my god, the hunter is near me, oh my god, he's going this way, right? But you can't, you know, it's it's kind of, it's a lot more difficult when you only have two people in VC. So in Legendary Rank Mode, Photographer is decent. In Lower Tiers, Photographer is very good, but in Mid Tiers, Photographer does struggle uh, quite a bit, and that is why he is a B-tier hunter. Uh, the next hunter on B-tier is Anne the Disciple. This was a new hunter added about a season and a half ago, something like that. See, something like that, dude. I don't even know. Um, but she is a she is actually a solid, well-rounded hunter. Um, she has good chase. She has very good chase, actually. She has very good camp. Her cipher control is terrible. She has probably one of the worst cipher control in the game. Um, so that is the problem with Anne. Um, she has good chase in that she can use her cats to stop the survivor, stun the survivor, um, and get quick knockdowns. It's almost like, it's like another version of Bloody Queen in a manner of speaking, right? You know, Anne, the giant disciple with the, um, uh, walks fast. I don't know how she walks that fast. She's like eight feet tall, and she still is like, she's booking around the map, dude. Like, she's like in a marathon or something. But 
Anyway, um, Anne's pretty good in that she can, you know, down the survivors pretty quickly with the cats. Her camp is very good, so you can double hit rescuers. You can even triple hit. I've seen a mercenary get triple hit if you time the cross properly. Um, you send out the cats. Throw down the cross, hit the survivor, the cats come back, stun the survivor, you hit them a second time, stuff the rescue just like that. So that is what's good about Anne, is she has very, very good camp and she can stuff rescues. Um, but the biggest problem is the cipher control. She has no way to control ciphers while she's camping, and she's one of those hunters that kind of has to stay at the chair if she wants to do her camp successfully. Um, so that is what makes Anne B, B tier. She has very good camp, very good uh, chase, just very bad cipher control. Okay, the last hunter in B tier is uh, my favorite hunter, actually. Very fun to play. Um, harder than you think. You have to have very good controls, and that is Clown. Uh, Clown is a B tier hunter in that he gets countered by a, a ton of survivors, dude. He gets countered more than any other by more survivors than any other hunter in the game. The hardest one being the most common survivor and the most broken survivor, uh, that is Priestess. Um, Clown just gets gets demolished by a priestess. And the issue with this is when you're in your opening dash and you see a priestess, you're like, oh my god, it's a free hit because it's an opening dash and I'm so fast and they can't do anything about it. Um, and I have amazing control, so it doesn't matter where they go, I'll still hit them. Uh, no, sir, that's not how that works because I'm just going to walk through my portal and then I hit the portal, the portal gets broken and there's no catch on the priestess. Um, now, if Clown went through the portal with his dash, that would be pretty good, but he doesn't. He just breaks the portal and the priestess is, is gone. She's like, yeah, I'm dipping. You're not going to catch me. So the biggest issue with Clown is he is countered by one Priestess, he is countered by Cowboy, and that if you dash at a Cowboy, they'll use their lasso, flip over you, and you just wasted a dash. Um, and he gets countered by Prospector, because it's like, oh, I'm just going to throw down a Magnet. Uh, so they'll throw down a Magnet, and you just lose your dash just like that. There goes your opening dash, there goes your free hit, you're in a bad position. Uh, Enchantress stuns you. Any stunning character, uh, including Priestess and including Cowboy, counters Clown. Um, again, also the issue with Clown is his early game is not very good. Um, if you can land the opening dash and get that second blink hit, you're off to a great start. But if you can't, you're in a bad spot. However, really high tier clowns will almost always, they'll like 95% of the time hit that opening dash because their controls are insanely good. Um, clown has very good camp. You will always double hit the rescuer if you do it properly. You can even tear shock survivors using that, uh, using that dash ability. Um, but yeah, you will always double hit the mercenary with Clown. It's almost impossible not to get double hit, because you rocket dash, fall up with a second hit immediately, and then go after the survivor they just rescued. So you can double hit the rescuer super easy with Clown. His cipher control is actually better than you think, because you can just put on uh, an infinite dash to a survivor, push them off the cipher, and go back to the chair before the rescuer gets there, because Clown is so fast. Um, so his cipher control is okay. His camp is very good. Um, his chase is very good once you have your presence built up, and that's why you run insolence with him. Um, and his early game chase is, is okay. It's okay. It could be better, but it's okay. Again, the reason why Clown is B tier is he gets countered by so many survivors. But overall, Clown is still a very, very balanced character. Um, and he may or may not be, once his Priestess nerf comes out, um, I still think I, he is B tier. But uh, he could be moving up to A tier. I could be wrong. We'll see. But I think he is the highest hunter in B tier as of right now. Now, moving on to the next tier. Um, I'm going to do like an A- minus and an A tier, so like slightly better A tiers compared to the other A tiers. Um, and the first hunter on the A- minus tier is Ripper. Jack the Ripper um, used to be S tier. He was absolutely broken. Then he was kind of down to A tier. But now the problem is a lot of survivors figured out how to counter him in terms of dodging Foggy Blades. Um, a lot of survivors at first are like, oh my god, what does a Foggy Blade do? I don't know how to kite a Ripper. And the Ripper's like, okay, Kobe, Foggy Blade, throw it from across the map, hits the survivor because they don't know how to dodge Foggy Blades, gets a second hit because he gets the speed boost from the fog. And it's just like, okay, I won because I downed a survivor in 10 seconds. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way anymore because survivors are smart. They look behind them when they kite and they see a Foggy Blade coming. They're like, oh, I'm just going to juke to the side here, misses the Foggy Blade, and I'm gone. Bye-bye. No hit on me. You just wasted 20 seconds of your of your chase because you could not land your Foggy Blade. And that's the biggest issue um, with Ripper is survivors know how to dodge Foggy Blades. They know how to see the light now. Um, when Ripper first came out and he was invisible, they're like, how the hell do I kite an invisible invisible hunter? Well, back then you didn't, um, but now survivors know how to use that light. They know how to um, essentially counter that invisibility in a way. Um, now, good rippers, when they're chasing a survivor, they will they will kind of run up against a wall. So the light shines through the wall, and you can't see which side the ripper's on. So that's a pretty good effect. But overall, um, that is the biggest downside to ripper, in that survivors know how to counter him, and they know how to dodge foggy blades now. Ripper's still a very good hunter. Don't get me wrong. Um, his early good chase is still pretty good, as if you, if you can hit your foggy blades. Uh, once his presence is built up and becomes invisible, he's broken because it's so hard to kite an invisible hunter. Um, his camp is very, very good. You can double hit the rescuer and you can stuff saves with hitting the foggy blade and following up with a regular hit for the kill. 
Um, but the problem with Ripper is his Cypher control is very bad. Um, he is very fast, so you can kind of go to Cyphers and get back sometimes before survivors go and you you know for the rescue you have peepers to slow down you can go to a cypher drop a peeper walk back before the survivor gets there um but again cypher control isn't very good um his chase early game is okay but survivors know how to dodge foggies now um but once he gets his presence built up his chase is very good he has a very good camp um and that is why he's an a minus tier hunter next hunter on a minus tier um is or is it oh it is feaster that's right feaster i totally forgot oh my god big tentacle octopus dude how could you forget about him but i almost did for a second because i am clueless anyway um next hunter being feaster on a minus biggest issue with feaster um is survivors know how to avoid tentacles um the biggest obviously the most known strategy of dodging a tentacle is let's just loop it let's just run a circle on the tentacle feaster goes boom throws down the tentacle misses because he looped around the tentacle and feaster's like oh dang it well there goes my entire strategy and the survivor just kited me 100 seconds and now i lose because cypher rush is broken um that is the biggest issue with feaster um is that survivors in top tiers know how to dodge tentacles now in lower tiers feaster is broken because you will hit your tentacle every single time because survivors don't know how to dodge it um but um, a good survivor can kite a feaster for a pretty good p period of time. Now, feaster's camp is really, really broken. So once you get that first down, if you get the first down quick enough... Uh, oh, also forgot to mention feaster's hitbox is very good. So that's that's it's very, very, very big. So you can get survivors from good distances. But feaster's camp is very broken. Um, so you can, you know, put up tentacles, hit with the tentacle, um, and then follow up with a second hit and stuff to save. Now, currently... Okay, currently, when you're in the middle of your animation of saving, if you get damaged by something other than a, an attack, like a bon bon bomb or a tentacle or, or a violinist string, it interrupts the attack. So that's very good for Feaster. You hit them with a tentacle while they're saving, follow up with a second hit, stuff the rest. You can even stuff mercs if you do it properly. Um, so that's very good for Feaster. Um, cipher control for Feaster isn't that good. However, you can tentacle from long distances. So you can put a tentacle on a survivor or on a cipher while you're camping at share. If the cipher's, you know, within the vicinity or nearby, and then drop the tentacle, maybe even get a hit if you're lucky. Um, you can drop peepers. A lot of feasters play peepers. You can drop peepers on a cipher here and there. That's pretty good. Um, so yes, feasters opening chase is okay, but good survivors can kite him for pretty good periods of time. His camp is broken. He has very good camp. Um, his cipher control is is okay. Uh, but because of his broken camp um, and the tentacles and his broken hitbox and the tentacles just being very good in general and having a very long, you know, very long range, that's what makes him an A minus tier hunter. Um, now we are moving on to A tier. Those are the only two hunters in A minus tier being Ripper and Feaster. Moving on to A tier, the first hunter um, in A tier. I don't know how many people agree with me on this, but this is my personal opinion. Don't judge me on this, guys. That is Spider. Um, Spider is still a very good hunter. She has been nerfed ever since she came out. She's been in nerf, 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 nerf. She's too broken. Everybody, blah, 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 nerf her. Um, and people, and the devs have been listening. They've been nerfing her, and she's still very good. Um, the problem with her now and why she's not a plus, you know, top of A tier or S tier is that her webs recharge very slow. Okay, so early game, her chase is decent. And you have to see, you see a lot of spiders playing Blink because her webs recharge so slow, and it's hard to get that down because you don't have as many webs as you used to have. Um, however, you, you, there's an interesting strategy with, with uh, spider peepers that's been coming out recently, um, and it's been proven to be pretty successful, so I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But uh, but for now, um, spider is an A tier hunter. Uh, her chase is decent. Her webs recharge slowly, so that's what makes her chase not as good as it used to be, but it's still it's still good. It's still good. Um, she does get pallet stun more than any, probably more than a lot of hunters in the game because she's like so big. She's like a big spider. Oh my god, I don't know how a spider gets that big, but... She's a big spider, so she can get pallets done pretty easily. That's a problem, but it's okay. Um, if you're dashing through a pallet, you're like zooming with those spider webs, and all you're like, oh my god, I'm just gonna throw a pallet. Oh, your pallet's done. Well, rip spider. Um, but yeah, <laughs> her chase is good. Um, her camp's pretty good uh, in that she has quick attack recovery. If you use your webs, you put down about three webs, and you just go zoom, 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 hit the survivor, quick attack recovery, uh, stuff like that. Um, also, she can double hit. Well, she can't double hit, but she can stuff rescues with her webs. She has a web shot for a quarter damage, follows up with a second web shot for another quarter damage, and a regular hit for the stuff. So her camp is good. Um, her chase late game is very good because her webs recharge really fast. Um, the biggest problem with her is her side control isn't very good, um, but her chase is good. Her camp is good. And that is, she's a solid hunter, and that is what makes her. Oh, also, she can share survivors wherever she wants with her cocoon death. Pretty good ability. You're just down a survivor. You're like, yeah, I don't really feel like taking to her chair, so I'm just gonna chair her right where I'm here, and nobody's gonna rescue because it's in a corner. Or I need to chair her super quickly and teleport to an exit gate before the survivor escapes, so I can secure the win or secure the tie or whatever it happens to be. So um, that is what makes survivor an A. Or oh my god, dude, spider an A tier hunter. 
Next hunter in A tier. Um, oh my god, dude, I'm not even paying attention. Yeah, okay, is the uh, totally broken hunter that people don't know how to play, and that is Mad Eyes. Um, totally broken, people don't know how to play him. I just said that. I'm repeating myself because I'm crazy and weird and I don't remember. I don't, I don't pay attention. Anyway, uh, Mad Eyes is a very, very, very broken hunter if you know how to use him. The problem is only about, I would say, 10 to 20 people on the entire NAEU server know how to perfect Mad Eyes or have perfected Mad Eyes and know how to play him properly. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about him because I personally don't know how to play him. I've never, I've only tried a couple of times and it was not, not very good. If you don't know how to play Mad Eyes, guys, he is a, he is an F tier hunter. Um, you will not win games if you don't know how to, what you're doing with Mad Eyes. If you know how to play Mad Eyes, you perfected him, he is an S tier hunter. Um, but if you're, if you have, he's just, we're just putting him at A tier because he's just so hard to play. Okay, um, Mad Eyes has very good map. He has very good control. He can literally control the entire map using fences in his consoles. Totally broken, totally overpowered. Um, his camp is very good. You can trap survivors. His his chase, well, running chase, he makes up for his chase differently, right? So his chase is very bad, obviously. He has no abilities in terms of chasing, but he uses the fence to trap survivors um, and knock survivors down by damaging them. So you don't even need to chase. He's just knocking out with fences. His camp's very good because you can block up the chair with fences. You can block up incoming rescuers. Um... And you can control the entire map. You can literally bark off the exit gates if you wanted to. I mean, it's it's overpowered. So Mad Eyes is an A-tier hunter because he's so hard to play. If people knew how to play him, he would be S-tier. Um, again, I'm not going to talk a lot about him. The most common strategy you see, I think right now, some people use Blink, but I think a lot of people have been using Fence to knock. You keep fencing a survivor until they get knocked down, and then you teleport to them and share them. It's kind of how you do that. Um, but yeah, but I'm not going to talk a lot about him because I don't know what I'm talking about. Because Mad Eyes is freaking ne next level scientific knowledge. Like, uh, like future generation stuff, you know? Like, I don't know. Um, so Mad Eyes is an A-tier hunter because he's so hard to play, but he is really broken if you know what you're doing with him. Okay, um, moving on. Are we in S-tier? No, there is one more hunter in A-tier. I was not paying attention. Um, no, there's two more hunters in A-tier. I was not paying attention. Okay, the next hunter in A-tier is... Now, this is going to... You guys might disagree, might agree with me on this, but the next hunter in A-tier is Bloody Queen. Um, this is not the last hunter in A-tier. She is the second to, to best hunter in A tier. With this nerf coming out on her, she is significantly hindered in her strategies. The reason for this is Bloody Queen. Um, her mirror used to be 15, no, it used to be 12 second recharge time. It's now 15. That's pretty bad. Um, every three seconds can make a huge difference in a game. Also, the mirror only lasts 13 seconds instead of 16. Now, this isn't too big of a deal because a lot of good Bloody Queens will be able to hit survivors within 13 seconds, no problem. But the biggest issue is now you can no longer double hit survivors. So when the mirror was 16 seconds, you would hit survivors with a mirror and then hit them with the mirror a second time because the mirror is totally broken. But now you can no longer do that because um, the mirror only lasts 13 seconds, so it's going to be really hard to do that and most likely not going to happen. Bloody Queen has very good chase. She has the best chase in the game. Um, the mirror goes through walls. You can hit survivors wherever the hell you want. It's totally broken. Um, her camp is is average, but she makes up for that using her mirrors to have cipher control. She has very good cipher control, probably the best in the game, um, because she can literally camp and mirror and hit a survivor on a on a cipher from across the map. Totally broken. So broken chase, broken cipher control, average camp. That still makes her a very good hunter um, and an A tier hunter. The problem, the reason why she's not S tier anymore is that um, the cooldown on the mirror is three seconds longer, which makes a huge difference, and the mirror lasting time is only 13 seconds instead of 16. So that also makes a huge difference. So that is why she is now an A tier hunter. Top light queens will still make her work and probably have a very high win percentage, probably around 70% with her. Um, but she is now an A tier hunter. Now, the last hunter on A tier is Violinist. Okay, a lot of people when Violinist came out, there were two types of people that when Violinist came out. They were like, oh my god, Violinist is totally broken. And the other types of people were like, oh my god, Violinist sucks. Um, you gotta look at the statistics here. Let's take let's take I Alien, for example. Okay, one of the best hunters in NAU. He has a 79 win percent with Bloody Queen. His win percent with Violinist is around 89-90%, which is significantly better. And you're seeing this with a lot of top hunters. They're Violinist, big long haired dude with the violin, playing the music, they're winning a lot more games with him than they are with Bloody Queen. Now, the argument for this is like, oh my god, Eli, you're so wrong because people just don't know how to counter violinists yet. Well, you know what? The way I look at it is we're looking at 100 tier list for Season 11, which is this current moment in time. Um, and at this current moment in time, violinist is winning way more games than these other hunters. Um, so he is the best hunter in A tier, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, I, you'd think people would figure out how to counter him by now. But, you know what? Maybe they have, maybe they haven't, I don't know. Um, but he's very good in that. Survivor goes to vault to window or pallet. Oh, I'm just going to put my strength through the pallet. Guaranteed hit. 
Now the survivor can't vault, or else you just get it with the normal attack. On top of that, his Rhapsody ability is very good. You can you have very good cipher control because you can throw it at the sorry, sorry, ciphers, make the survivor leave the cipher, um, or take it the notes and then remove them. Um, and that takes a lot of time, it buys you a lot of time. Um, his camp's very good because you can double hit rescuers with strings. Once you have your max presence, you can double hit even, even easier um, with the infinite movement. Um, so Violinist right now is the best hunter in A tier. Moving on to S tier, there are, what, three hunters in S tier? Three hunters in S tier. Um, the first hunter in S tier is Bon Bon Guard 26. Um, if you know how to play him, you're going to get four mans more than any other hunter in the game. The problem is he's actually harder to play than a lot of people think. Um, I know they only have him as a two difficulty on the uh, on the um, hunter report or whatever or whatever it is in the uh, in the notebook, but it's it's really not the case because bomb line you have to land your your bomb chains. It's hard to understand how to land bomb bomb chains. Okay, his camp is broken. Okay, once you get that first time, his early game chase is not very good, but if you can get the bomb chains down, if you ever seen Daku play, he hits bomb chains 24-7, like it's, you know, like it's, he does it every day, which he does do it every day, but, you know. Anyway, uh, Bon Bon, his camp is absolutely broken. Um, he has the best camp in the game. You will stuff rescuers with Bon Bon more than any other hunter in the game. I cannot stress this enough. His camp is absolutely overpowered. Um, the most common way you see a Bon Bon camp is you hit, the, you use the uh, control bomb, to get the first hit on the survivor, then use um, a two second or a 40 second or whatever, and you do a bomb chain to get the second hit. Um, and then you follow up with a, a third hit with the regular attack for the knockdown. You get some mercenary, it's a little bit harder. You have to do an another bomb after that, but if you bomb chain properly, it's not a problem. You can stuff mercenaries with this hunter. That's how good Bon Bon is. Um, and the reason why Bon Bon is an S tier hunter is his camp is so, so broken compared to every other hunter in the game. He has the best camp in the game. Um, and that is why he is an S tier hunter. Um, also, his late game, once his bombs recharge a lot faster and they have greater distance, you will knock down survivors like it's no problem. You'll hit your bomb chains easily. Your camp is even better. Survivors will not be able to rescue off you if you do it properly. Um, and that's what makes Bon Bon an S tier hunter. Moving on to the next hunter in S tier, there are two more. The next hunter in S tier is Wu Chang. Okay, so with this nerf to Bloody Queen, Wu Chang, in my opinion, is now an S tier hunter. Okay? Really tall dude, okay? Really tall dude with long hair, okay, guys? Keep that in mind. He carries down an umbrella even though he guards. What is he guarding? I don't know, dude. I don't really, I don't I don't know any of this stuff. He's guarding something with umbrella. Oh my God, dude, I, I need to guard my treasure here come, or my king. Here comes a dude. I'm gonna use my umbrella to, no, right? But whatever, you know, it's a game. Who cares? Okay, Wu Chang um, is a very, very good hunter. The biggest problem with Wu Chang is this early game chase is very, very subpar. Okay, so before his presence is built up, he has a hard time getting that first down um, on survivors. Okay, um, but the reason why Wu Chang is actually good because his black form is really overpowered. So when you you can get a free first hit on a survivor if you umbrella on a cipher, they don't even see you coming. You just appear right there and you just smack them with the black form because the the um, the hit is super quick and the survivors don't have time to get away. So you get that first hit really easily with black form. Then you just need to get a second hit after that if you're using destructiveness, which you should be having wall block. Um, you should be having confined space. You break pallets super quick, you hit super quick, and you're really fast in black form, so you can get that down fairly quickly after you get that first hit. Um, if necessary, you can umbrella on a survivor and use that uh, charge attack with white form if they run into the open. So you have a lot of ways of getting the first down. Well, again, his early game chase is subpar. You have a lot of ways of getting the first down. I cannot stress that enough. Once his presence is built up, it is very overpowered. The soul siphon is a broken ability. Survivors cannot rescue, vault windows, throw pallets, uh, get dungeon for that matter. Uh, and once his presence is maxed, um, it, it happens instantly. So you umbrella on a survivor, they're soul siphon, they're dead. I mean, you can double hit them so quickly from there. Uh, you can stuff rescues with soul siphon. Um, on top of that, you have the wavering souls or the bell, as a lot of people call it. Um, umbrella on a survivor, bell, it's a free hit. It's a free hit. Then you use, once you get that first hit, you use your regular bell to catch up to them and get the second hit. Um, you down the survivor 10 seconds every time. Five seconds sometimes. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, so Wu Chang, the biggest issue with Wu Chang is his early game is pretty subpar, but once his presence is built up, um, he has better camp than people think. He has pretty good camp. You can double hit rescuers most of the time. Um, his cipher control is pretty is, is pretty good because you can throw your umbrellas to ciphers, maybe push the survivor off for a few seconds. You can even go to the cipher if you want to get a free hit and then maybe try to get back before the rescuer can rescue. Um, so that is the upside to Wu Chang. Um, he has pretty good cipher control, very good map presence. He can get around the map with his umbrella so easily. Um, it's broken. He has a free teleport, teleport in his ability. Um, he has very, very good chase. 
um, once his presence is built up. Um, and he has very good map control, like I said. Um, so that is what makes Wu Chang an S tier hunter. Now, the final hunter in S tier and the best hunter in the game is what do you guys think it is? Dream Witch. Yeah, it's Dream Witch. Okay. I don't know why I did that. Uh, obviously, it's Dream Witch. Uh, Dream Witch is broken, as we all know, if you know how to play it properly. She's hard to play, but once you get her down, um, you probably won't lose games because she's just that good. Uh, Dream Witch has um, incredible, you know, her incredible map control, um, incredible camp, incredible whatever, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the reason for this is Dream Witch for her. Oh God, excuse me. Excuse me. Wow. Um, okay. Her early game chase is good in that you can just double patrol her survivor. Like, what, how do you beat? You can't kind of patrol her, guys. You can try, but it's not going to work. He's too fast. He's just zooming. He's like, oh, I'm patrolled. I'm dead. Um, so that's basically how it works with Dream Witch. Um, is that you can patrol her survivor with the main body, and then you can patrol her survivor with your spawn follower. Double hit, you're down, you're on chair. Okay, so that's Dream Witch for you. Um, first down, just like that. Second of all, you leech a bunch of survivors. You can literally, ha your leech follows them around the map. So they go to decode. If they don't remove their leech and they go to decode, it's just like, oh, I'll just switch to my leech and then push them off the survivor. They can't decode, guys. You can't decode against a Dream Witch Lake game because you can cover all the cy cypher. You get down to one cypher, she can literally put a, a spawn and a leech on each of the cyphers and you just can't decode it. You can't finish the cypher, right? So it's just that good. Um, additionally, uh, her camp is very good because you can distant camp with one leech and camp with the spawn. Um, so you have a survivor incoming, hit them with the spawn, or hit them with the leech, they get to the chair, hit them again with the spawn, they're either stuffed, or if they're a mercenary, they're doubled. So that's really good. Um, now, the nerf to Dream Witch is that the, for each person you leech, you have to be a little bit more careful with your leeches, it probably won't make a difference, but leeches get removed five seconds faster for each new leech you have added to the game. So that is the nerf to Dream Witch, it, it's not too big of a deal, she's still completely broken and overpowered, um, and that is why Dream Witch is S tier and the number one hunter in the game. And that's why she's totally broken. That's going to do it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my Discord in the link below. It's pretty fun. We talk about a lot of Denny 5 stuff. We play games together. It's, it's super fun. Um, if you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate all your guys' support for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.